December 10th, Sunday, 2017. It is day 325 in the Donald Trump Zionist regime. First, we are going to focus on the ruler of the American empire first today. Jerusalem has never been the capital of any other people. I think the sooner the Palestinians come to grips with this reality... That I'm in charge, and you're not... The sooner the world comes to grips with this, the better for everybody. Well, actually, the world's not taking it very well. Uh, Turkey Erdogan is in the news today. He's calling Israel a child murderer state. Netanyahu comes back with a rebuttal. I'll give you that uh, clip here in a second. I think uh, Erdogan is still pissed off at the, uh, the club, the club that tried to take him out and, of course, it was Russia and Putin that saved his life. I think it would be an understatement to say that things are heating up in the Middle East. Thank you, Jared Kushner. Thank you, Donald Trump. And now to the leader of the empire's rebuttal. Uh, Mr. Erdogan has, uh, Mr. Erdogan has uh, attacked Israel. You ask, what is my response? I'm not used to receiving uh, uh, lectures uh, about morality from a leader who bombs Kurdish villagers in his native Turkey, who jails journalists, who uh, helps Iran go around uh, international sanctions, and who helps terrorists, including in Gaza, uh, kill innocent people. Uh, that is not the man who is going to lecture us. Well, it looks like it's time for Donald Trump to take another trip abroad. You know, go over to the wall. Do whatever you do on the wall. Maybe he can get guidance from somebody up there on, you know, to make the right decisions. I think, I think pretty much every leader in the world, I think there were like 20-some leaders in Europe, every single leader in the world told Donald Trump not to do it except for two people, Jared Kushner, a 36-year-old slumlord who makes his money by, you know, taking advantage of poor people, and then Bibi. These are the people who instructed Donald Trump to do this against the whole world's approval. Okay, let's go on. Okay, just a quick translation here. Something like, uh, let them eat cake because we control the Federal Reserve Banking Cartel. Um, any other questions? And pretty much they all got it. You know, they're French. They're funny like that. We cooperate on many areas, including security. And as you well know, uh, that cooperation has saved many lives. Israel has provided... Uh, and valuable intelligence to many countries in Europe, many countries outside of Europe, that have prevented dozens of horrible terrorist attacks, some of which, unfortunately, you have uh, suffered. That sort of reminded me of how the mafia works. They come in your business and say, would you like to buy fire insurance? I mean, you don't really have a choice, do you? Your efforts in Lebanon are to be commended. Your efforts to prevent the spread of Iranian aggression are to be commended. Does this mean that uh, Emmanuel Macron and I agree on everything? Not yet. We're working on it. It's a question of time. But it's a pleasure to... I will make a note that I think he tried to stay as humble as possible. I mean, as humble as the leader of an empire could possibly show humbleness. Uh, maybe he was even a bit charming. Uh, I do think that they started the press conference off a little nervous. We'll talk about that later. A little body language, but here's more by the leader of the empire. But it's a pleasure to uh, see you again in Paris. Uh, Paris is the capital of France. Jerusalem is the capital of Israel. It's been the capital of Israel for 3,000 years. It's been the capital of the Jewish state for 70 years. So this part here, a lot of people might take issue with. Um, a lot of people think that the ancient capital of Israel was Sekem or Samaria. I'm not really an expert on Israel history, 
but I'm sure they've had more than one a capital. So people will take issue with that. Here's the main thing. This is a power struggle. This is a power struggle that I'm not sure who's going to win. I mean, people always go back to the Bible, the interpretations and the predictions of the Bible, but this is definitely a power struggle, and I don't think that the winner has been decided yet. Well, what I know, I'm, I'm just uh, rambling here, but I think people would take issue on uh, what the ancient capital of Israel was. President Macron and I agree that we must stop the main source of aggression in the Middle East, which is Iran. Iran uh, is all over the place. It's in uh, Iraq, it's in Syria, it's already in Lebanon, where the president is valiantly trying to change the situation, taking a real initiative, which we appreciate and support. It's in Gaza, it's in Yemen. Uh, we have to uh, do what we can to, uh, to stop Iran. What Iran is trying to do regarding Israel, whom it openly calls for our annihilation, is to do two new things. The first new thing is to entrench itself militarily with land forces, air forces, and naval forces in Syria, with the express purpose of fighting and destroying Israel. We will well, those were pretty strong words, and I think pretty much every American alive realizes what um, they have in store for Americans. I mean... They want Americans to take Persia down. Uh, here's the thing. I believe they're nervous. Let's, um, we're going to go to the body language. Let's go to the body language. I mean, they act, really, they act really calm. They're putting on a good charade and everything. But I really think these people in power are nervous because things are not going the way they want them to, 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 do, to go. Uh, for example, in Syria, I mean... The people in charge, the so-called leaders of the world, I mean, they, they failed miserably in Syria. And we know who went in there and looked like the emperor. I mean, Putin went in there like a real man and just cleaned the place up. I mean, so what I'm, my whole thing is this power struggle that's going on now, there is no clear winner, is there? This is getting serious. Uh, let's hope it doesn't get too serious. But the problem is with these people like Donald Trump and the people who pull Donald Trump's strings, I mean, they, 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 they don't understand how to wave the white flag. They don't really know how to judge character and body language. I mean, these people need help. They need good advisors because what they're getting into, they opened up a can of worms here, didn't they? Jared Kushner, B.B., Donald Trump, they opened up a can of worms here, and I believe they're nervous. So let's go, a little, let's go into the body language and see if we can uh, sense any nervousness. I mean, they have to be nervous. What they've done here is opened up a can of worms. I mean, if you had half a brain, you'd be nervous. So we'll just quickly do a little body language analysis here. Now, like I said, uh, Netanyahu did a very good job of trying to stay humble. That might have had the effect of maybe him being nervous in what Donald Trump did or what Donald Trump was ordered to do. So let's look for some signs of nervousness here. I noticed, uh, I don't catch it here, but uh, B.B. was looking to his right. There he is playing with his, his shirt. Look at uh, Macron, hands. I just sense nervousness there. I mean, well, yeah, a little, I mean, not a whole lot of nervous. I mean, but again, if you have to be nervous in a situation like this, I mean, this is a, this is an extremely volatile situation here. There's a reason why the, all the old presidents did not do this. Yeah, it's just a powder keg. That's all it is. Okay, now we go on to the puppet that tweets. And it uh, looks like, uh, I believe that not only the Republican Party has been harmed recently, but the Democratic Party has been, but there is no difference. I like the way Ron Paul says, uh, when the kids ask him about a third party, uh, Ron Paul says, I just wish there was two parties, because there's just, just one party. Okay, we won't go into that. Um, it looks like, well, we've already talked about the Middle East is on fire because of Jared Kushner. 
Donald Trump. But let's talk about Nikki Haley a little bit because, well, everybody knows she has Indian background. I love it how these people in charge, our masters, pick Indians and push up the Indians in positions of power. But um, at the end of the video, I have a little clip on um, one of the people who pull the strings of Donald Trump, and he also pulls the strings of Nikki here. Uh, when you're a billionaire, you know, you can do things like that. You can even buy newspapers. The man He bought the uh, RJ, the Las Vegas newspaper, and yes, he even tells BB Netanyahu what to do from time to time. I don't think Americans really realize that, that what these people are doing, what the people in government do, they do because the billionaires tell them to do that. I mean, this is probably what's wrong with America today, today where you have a billionaire from Las Vegas who's basically running the government. He tells these government shills like Donald Trump and Nikki and even Bibi, he tells them what to do. I mean, no wonder all hell's breaking loose. I mean, these billionaires are not elected. Not elected at all. Jared Kushner is wrecking havoc in the Middle East. And we'll just keep on looking here for some interesting news. I have a funny feeling that Jared Kushner will be heading home, back home to New York pretty soon. I'm pretty sure the heat is getting too hot in the kitchen. Steve Bannon is telling uh, Donald Trump that he's getting happy talk from his lawyers. I don't think that, this is not the first time that Steve Bannon told Donald Trump to change your lawyers. Donald Trump may not realize this, but he's surrounded by traitors. It's no, it's no uh, surprise that the leader of Palestine has snubbed V.P. Pence. I don't think V.P. Pence is heading to Palestine anytime soon. So we'll just wind this segment down today looking for some more interesting news. Apparently, California is running out of prisoners to fight its deadly wildfires. Now, of course, this is troubling to me. Of course, they say, oh, they volunteer. These prisoners volunteer. But you know what's happening in the prison. They put pressure on them to do this. This is, this is just not right. It's just not right. Uh, Bank of America, we've seen this movie before. Yes, it always ends badly when you see they push it up. And then they take it down. They push it up. And I mean, it's, we don't have a we don't have a free market. It's a central controlled market, controlled by the government, and the government only helps out the corporations. Corporations get the whole piece of the pie, and you and I get nothing. This is very troubling. Remember a while back, they tortured some disabled kid, and then Chicago. I mean, they're going to get off with community service. I mean, you and I spit on the sidewalk. We get a ticket. If I mean, you and I, you, you and I better watch our step. But these people can do anything they want. They are not welcome here. I mean, they're, the power struggle is heating up. They want the whole piece. They want the whole pie. They're not going to share any piece of the pie. i got to correct myself. Earlier I said that VP Pence was not going, probably would not go to Palestine. There really is no Palestine, is there? I mean, I think there's a little piece of land there. It's called an open-air prison. But for the most part, I don't even believe there is a Palestine. Donald Trump is battling for his self-preservation. Another thing that's wrong with America today, these people who are pushed into the positions of power, they're nothing but shills. And then they do what they damn well please. And then when they get caught, they take the taxpayers' money to give to these young girls who may be telling the truth. or they, You know, they probably are telling the truth, but we don't know. But they're getting taxpayer money, and we have to pay for all this bullshit. It's a problem. I mean, why? The taxpayers are getting taken to the cleaners, aren't they? I mean, that's what the whole overwhelming theme is. Every time we come here and every time we have this conversation is the taxpayer is getting screwed in more ways than one. The problem is there's getting to be less and less taxpayers. That's where they're that's where they're getting nervous. We talked about body language of these people. The people in charge, they're getting nervous because when all these companies are laying off and there are no more factories and there are no more coal miners or steel mill workers, I mean, guess what? That means there's less taxpayers. That means there's less money to go around. That means there's going to be civil war in the intelligence communities. Civil war between everybody. And who, who loses out? 
You and I lose out because I can tell you for a fact that there was no huge factory that broke ground today in America that could employ 10,000 American deplorables. No, it did not happen because they, these people are worried about the Middle East. They're worried about this. They're worried about that. But I'll tell you who they're not worried about. They're not worried about you and I. That's a fact. End of speech. Well, I was checking the weather. I went online to check the weather, see what it was going to look like today. And I was taken aback a little bit when I saw this title to this article from the Las Vegas Review Journal. I was kind of shocked. It says, Clear Skies Above. And obviously, you're looking at about six large chemtrails. So I actually went outside and I did a check for myself. I pointed the camera up there and I wanted to see what the weather looked like. And sure enough, chemtrails were in the air and I don't know about you but skies full of chemtrails, barium, alumin aluminum, copper, nanos, nanites, I mean that's not my definition of clear skies but here we have it so we're going to document it uh, all the newspapers, all the mainstream media, all TV, everybody Practically everybody. There's not, there's not one mainstream media outlet out there that is not going to lie to you about this. So here's what they call clear skies. Our masters. Our masters call these clear skies, or they have another word, uh, their cover story is their vapor trails. Uh, but they never do a chemical analysis of what's in those vapor trails. Okay, I'll leave you with this. The uh, person who just bought the Review Journal, his name is Sheldon Adelson, yes. He's the billionaire godfather who donates billions to the Republicans. He helped get Donald Trump elected. Here, him and his wife are at Donald Trump's inauguration. Yes, you're looking at the man who pulls the strings of the President of the United States. And he just happens to own the Review Journal. If there's a conflict of interest here, well, you could probably write a book on it. I don't have the time. The main thing is, these people have a sense of humor. I mean, they're in your face with it now. They're not going to be happy until all the Americans are sitting around like this. And this is what they'll consider clear skies above America. End of speech.